Come on, Spike. Let's do episode two. Come on. Okay, you'll get a hat. Don't worry. We're going to nail this, and then we'll get back to it, okay? This channel now has a new sponsor. It's Audible.com. Audible.com has over 150,000 titles to choose from. For checking out Audible.com, they will give you a free book of your choice. I'm currently listening to Why We Make Things and Why It Matters, The Education of a Craftsman by Peter Korn. And Spike is listening to Dr. Seuss, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. If you appreciate this channel, please show your support by going to audible.com forward slash Duresta and sign up for a free trial. If you cancel your trial, the book is yours to keep. See, I told you I'd nail it. Thanks, buddy. This is going to be all tips and tricks pertaining to paint cans and brushes and the like. Uh, and right here you see a can of Bondo, and when the Bondo's open, the whole room smells, so I always want the top on as fast as possible. But the top always has unhardened Bondo, which gets on your skin. So I've made this little hinge up out of the scrap box and hot glue. And the good thing is, when I go to a new can of Bondo, I could just pry this off and hot glue it to that new can of Bondo. And put a little cup on the back, again, with hot glue, just to keep your hardener in place. If your local hardware store sells these type of cans, which are really annoying, the old days we used to have the screw-on caps, which are much more convenient. These things are hard to pop open, and then it's hard to control when they're open. So what I often do is I just poke a little hole in the corner, just like this, with my ice pick, and then I can pour a little bit out as I need it. And then to close it, I just put a screw twisted in there. Now I know many of you will say this will evaporate, and of course it will evaporate, but I use it up faster than I notice it evaporating away. So in this shop where the materials get used a lot, this technique actually works. Again, wipe on poly, this thing gets all junked up, it gets hard to open, it gets even harder to close, so we end up just poking a hole in the corner, pouring out what we need, and then using the dish. And then when we gotta close it up, just put the screw in there like that. Spike, shake it up, shake it up. New scene, new scene, shake it up. Shake it up, don't be so excited. Shake it up, shake it up. A big thing in the shop is saving brushes. And uh, we use a lot of throwaway brushes because we don't use too many critical finishes, not in this shop. Um, so if the brush is gonna be used ongoing for a job, we try and keep it in a can. Maybe it's a can of thinner, or maybe it's a can that has a little bit of the actual paint that we've been using in it. And uh, if we go away for the night, I cover it up like this. It help, helps keep the paint sealed, and then of course we put it in the fireproof cabinet for the night. And then the next day, you just pull the glove off, and you're ready to go. And if it's only been about 24 hours, you won't have a skin on it. Sometimes there's products out there that have a big tall can, like here Brooklyn Roasting Company, we get it locally. The can is tall enough so you can have some finish in the bottom or some thinner and then close the can up. It's not a super tight seal so it only lasts for the duration of a job that you're working on or the paint job you're working on. But these are both good options to have. And then another little thing with the can like this, if you're going to use the can with thinner and you want to pour thinner back into uh, a larger can, you can put a little spout on it, and I do this little trick to put a little spout on it, and that's just done with a little pair of needle-nose pliers. And then you could pour that back into a bigger can. Spike, get up here. Again, saving brushes if you're in the middle of a job, we go through these cans you know, when we're rolling on some work, one or two a week, it's a pain in the butt to keep cleaning the brush, so I just keep a brush in there. If it's a full, full up can, using the vice grip is, is, is easier, but if the can is a little bit emptier, like this one is, you could actually grab the brush and use it. Brush is always in there, always available. That's a good thing. Same thing with rollers, we use these small rollers and they stay in the can for the duration of the job. If we're gonna be painting something, we're going to be primering a lot of different things. We just keep the roller in the can. And then when the job is over and the can is either dead or the roller is dead, we just throw it away. But uh, that's what we do. We just 
put the roller in the can, put it on the shelf, and everything's always ready to go. Here's another old tip. This actually I, I learned, I think, on TV a long time ago. It actually is pretty handy. If you have a can, Ooh, that's lacquer, that smells crazy. You can see the old brush in there. If you have a can and uh, you're going to keep wiping your brush off on the edge, it's always good to put holes in the gutter. You see that? I'll put a couple. You can see me do that. Put holes in the gutter and the paint will leak back into the can. And then your seal stays relatively clean. Again, if this can's going to sit on the shelf for a year, it's probably not the best idea to do that. But if it's something that's in action, it's going to be getting used often, then you should be safe. A lot of people like to use Brie Wax, and so do I, and an easy way to apply it, I like to use a brush. This is sort of an ancillary tip related to the cans and the paintbrush stuff. You force it into the nooks and crannies of the grain, especially when you're using something like oak with a deep grain. And then you let it sit for a little bit, and then when it dries off, then you buff it out. By using a brush, you get a nice initial penetration. Also, if, you, if you're putting Brie Wax on something that has a lot of nooks and crannies, like maybe there's trim work or there's molding, brush works with the Brie Wax. So, it's a little Brie Wax brush tip. And we can't keep the brush in the can, so we just keep the brush on the can. This is a trick I learned from my buddy Paul Welder, and that's Dave's dad. If you have a can of oil paint, or oil base paint, and there's a lot of air in it, invariably that paint at the bottom is going to get a skin on it. And to prevent that from happening, fill the can up with argon that you have in your welder. No pun intended with the name welder and the object welder. Argon is heavier than air. will displace the air and now the skin will not form on top of that oil paint that's left in there because there is no air in there. 